Good evening. I'm truly privileged to be here, to be invited and to conclude the superb lineup of the first TEDx Arendal. Great event you have created and great atmosphere you have here. And in the same time, I feel really stressed because, well, the only thing between you and the lovely discussion about the event is me. <laughs> so I'm at least trying my best to save a bit time. We have a deal in Estonia that every Estonian speaker, wherever he goes, must speak less than the time given to speak. So I'm trying also to save at least a couple of milliseconds and to talk on topic which I'm actually not so strong. It's kind of backward looking. Looking backward, what did Estonia do during the last 20 years differently compared to other countries uh, so that it became the fastest growing and yet in the same time inclusively growing and yet in the same time less spending per capita information society and <laughs> and and of course I need to start from the present situation I'm a regular Estonian I have never ever in my life seen a bank checkbook. I have never signed any bank transfer. I have never seen any tax declaration in the printed form or signed it. I have, uh, for the last 10 years, I have been voting my parliament and municipalities over the internet, wherever I am physically located. I don't, well, I have a full access to my medical records. I can share it with the designated doctors whom I wish. I can have a second opinion from whatever doctor on my electronic records. I have not seen for years a paper prescription from the doctor with which I go to that uh, pharmacy. I have uh, many, many examples to bring about the regular citizens' life in Estonia, which we call information society. But uh, really the question that bothered us and which we started from was the kind of core 21st century one, Shakespearean one in terms of 21st century, and that's no longer to be or not to be. But for a small country who just regained its independence in early 1990s, it turned out to E or not to be E. Because we did not have any chance to survive as an independent country economy who was so tightly connected earlier, artificially with a Soviet economy, that we needed to do things so differently as we could. And, and just to, to move back to the very early 1992, you can imagine a situation where a first independent Estonian Republic Prime Minister goes to his office, which is a nice big office in the old city of Tallinn, capital city, up in the Dompia, Dompia Hill, and uh, he goes to his office and secretaries are meeting him and saying, hello, Mr. Prime Minister, and, and she says, hello, and his room will be showed to him, and he says, wow, it's, it's a nice room, and uh, it's a big desk, and, uh, and on the desk there were six <coughs> phones. And well, he was, wow, lots of phones, and, and three of those phones were without any dial. Uh, and Prime Minister said, wow, lots of phones, and uh, well, and why so many? And the uh, secretary said, well, they were here. Uh, but uh, if the, uh, how can I call from that red phone without the dial? Well, we don't actually know, Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> well, but if it rings, then who is calling? <laughs> well, we, we actually don't know, Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> Well, should I answer them? 
well, it would be a good idea because then we know who is calling. <laughs> When army left, Soviet army left, there were on top of each other an old copper infrastructures of Communist Party, of military intelligence, of regular KGB, of the militia, of the trade unions, of the railway, of the different parts of the Communist Party, and no maps were left. So you really did not know how it was interconnected all. <laughs> it really required a restart. <laughs> restart from the day one. The understanding that you can't survive without building up a society with the modern tools was clearly understandable and uh, it was built on three cornerstones. First of all, we recognized that we need to give people, society, organizations, an access. Access to modern infrastructure, modern communication infrastructure. Secondly, we need to build up services. Services which are not just a uh, a electronic or modern copy of the of the old bureaucracy. You know, IT and internet is just an amplifier. And if you amplify a lousy business process, a lousy bureaucracy, it just becomes a very loud noise, a very loud and bad bureaucracy. And it just creates more and more mess. So it gives you an opportunity to rethink the way how the public administration, how your business, how your organization, how your school is built up. And the services were the second cornerstone. And third one was the skills. The skills for people, the totally new skill set for people, and it was decided that we start with schools. This is a most best return on investment you can have. You build up internet to all the schools, you take computers to all the schools, you frame it in a private-public partnership, you build up as much support from society as you can, and, and, uh, and education has always been, in a way, a, a fetish for Estonians. We, I remember my grandfather told to me, sitting in front of his formerly owned, once owned lands during the Soviet Union time, and he says that whatever government is in force in Estonia, only thing you can be sure is your brains. So, so study. So you can make your own future. Whatever you want, you don't need to rely on what happens in this country, who is in force. So we, we, we felt that that new skill set is very needed. Tiger Leap, as a private foundation, where government is also just one stakeholder, has transferred the education system into something different. We did not focus in the beginning to, to content of education because when you give an internet and computers to children, they just learn it. And, uh, and, and the content came later on together with teacher's training. And sometimes it felt that children became more fluent, more expert than the teachers. Mm -hmm. And they were the ones, after graduating from gymnasiums, they were an avalanche. It was a 100% new generation where everybody had the skills, how to use IT, how to use internet, and they changed universities. Mm. Now they are coming as a full avalanche, a new center of gravity of society. <laughs> they become already a managers, a directors, a politicians, a senior decision makers. And the way how that society, part of society has changed Estonia is significant. 
In addition to teaching children, it was very vital to take it to a broader society. In 1998, in 1999, we organized a tours. Just packed the trucks with, an, with the computers, <coughs> went to the cities like, like Arendal, for a full day to a central uh, stage and had a full uh, day, eight hours of uh, training to everybody, free training to everybody. We covered Estonia as a small country. We covered, with the 10 days, more than 50,000 people and they were signing up to free email. They learned how to use the e-government services. They used, uh, learned how to uh, learn banking services, and that old tour was financed by private sector because they felt that they are interested in turning the society, in turning the, their users into not a bank office users, but an internet banking users, not just a telecommunication service outsiders, but as, a, as a heavy users. So that is a reason why private sector has been supporting that, because that was part of their transformation as well. Those tools were followed up later on with a massive three months blue collar training where within three months time for the budget of, again, private stakeholders only, 20% of Estonian employment market was trained how to use IT and, uh, uh, and Internet. Not because they need it at their job, but because they should be part of information society. Mm -hmm. uh, At 2002, 2003, we, we felt very strongly that government role is not to preach just. You can't be taken seriously when you preach something what you don't practice. So we had an opportunity also to, to rethink the way how government is working. And, uh, and we, we were talking with Prime Minister about the future ideas of the cabinet and the governance system. And he, well, we said, well, wh why won't we start from the top? Let's make a cabinet meeting paperless, because nobody is doing a handwriting any longer. Everybody is using, actually, the computers in public administration. Only, only government members are the ones who are looking to the printed papers. He said, great idea. <laughs> that was our prime minister at that time. He said, great idea, uh, but we don't have any money. Uh, so I went to state chancellery and said, what is the cost of copying the papers per year? And he said, it's 1.5 million Estonian kroons. Then I went to our private stakeholder and said, are you willing to build up a system for uh, 1.5 million Estonian kroons, which nobody ever has done before, and we don't know actually how to do it. Uh, <laughs> And we need it in two months' time. <laughs> because it was June when we talked, and in August we wanted to have a full restart for the government. And you know what the company said? Great idea. And they put the volunteers and the experts and specialists to work. And that system, which we were originally afraid will be thrown away by next government. It's Estonian national sport to change governments. <laughs> so we thought that next government will come and say, we are serious government. We don't do those toys and tools and computers. But it's still now, 10 years later, still in use, 50 million uncopied papers later, the payback of that system was on, on 2 million uncopied papers and it has been also changing the way how government is working. The way... <laughs> the way how government is working is transparent. People know what cabinet is deciding. The agenda is public, and you are building a, a, a bridging the gap between society and politicians, the gap between society and government, making it more transparent, 
making it more efficient and most importantly making it accessible as a human right and secure for all people. Our answer is 2E. And I concluded second before my time. Thank you. <laughs>